What an amazing privilege, what an amazing honor to be able to be called the sons and daughters of God. Let's look into it. Amen. Good to have you with us today, my daily Bible study friends and scholars. Today we're going to look into John, 1 John 3, 1 and 2. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, it do, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we will see him as he is. Amen. Praise the Lord. So when we talk about being called out of the world, it has a lot to do with understanding who God is. For instance, John 17 and 6 I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now if they had, if he, Jesus, had manifested the name of God unto the men, what name did they have? Well, let's take another look at it. They did come up with one name in Acts 4 and 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. What is another name in John 1 and 12? But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Philippians 2 9 through 11. Wherefore, God has also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. In 3.17, And whatsoever you do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. And praise the Lord. And so I'm going to go back to John, the first chapter. It says, But as many as received him, to, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Amen. You see, um, when we're talking about the privilege, the honor of being called and being created and being made a son of the living God, a daughter of the living God, it has to involve the name of that very same God. The name of God is Jesus. That's why it's imperative that when we are born in the water, we are born in the name of Jesus. We go down in the name of Jesus. We come up in the name of Jesus. Amen. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus. And you will receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. But I'm just talking about the massive privilege that we have being called the sons of God, being able to be transformed into his image from faith to faith. Praise the Lord. I want you to pray that you would you would see the connection between being born again and the name of Jesus, because it is a vital connection. It's no less important than the umbilical cord to the embryo. Amen. That umbilical cord carries everything that that child needs to be born into the world. That umbilical cord could be called the name of Jesus. Without the name of Jesus, you have no salvation. Without the name of Jesus, you have no health. Without the name of Jesus, you have no healing. Without the name of Jesus, you have uh, less understanding. Without the name of Jesus, you are not giving enlightenment to the fullest extent that you can. So... In the name of Jesus, I pray that you will look at this video again very carefully. Look at the scriptures and see how very closely the word is to tied to the name of Jesus. For the Bible says the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as of the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. 
I love you. I look forward to our next meeting in Jesus' name. Amen.